Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I thought we'd sort of do a recap on Men's Paris Fashion Week that's just taken place and just a sort of general outlook of how the fashion industry and the fashion scene is heading at the minute. I think there's a lot of important things going on for the good or for the bad and I think it's clear that this Paris Fashion Week is a big talking point in regards to those things. If you're new around here as well, please don't forget to subscribe, drop a like and let me know in the comments what you think about this video too. So I think the key one to really start off with is Louis Vuitton and Pharrell's second show there. It kicked off sort of Paris Fashion Week and Fashion Week as a whole and really was the gate opener for the whole thing. Everybody wants to be a cowboy now and the show is theatrical and as over the top as it ever has been at Louis Vuitton. They always know how to put on an interesting show, you know, incorporating a big level of extravagancy and, and really showing us something more than just the clothes. I think it's clear as well that Pharrell's now sort of continuing to show a theme in his design work every time he shows. Whether this is something new and something different that we're ready to see, I'm not really so sure. I think it's definitely been done before, but it's interesting to see his take on stuff. I do think some of the products coming out is really strong. I think the market's reacting to it in a positive way in some way, shape or form. But I do think that perhaps there's still a bigger message to be told with his Louis Vuitton. It's also interesting to see the similarities that Pharrell and Nigo have in their design language. I don't really see it as much of each of them copying one another or anything like that and I wouldn't be surprised if Nigo is doing some sort of consultancy work at Louis Vuitton. I think it's more just with them being so similar in terms of the individuals they are and working closely together for most of their life it just makes sense the main talking point i think with louis vuitton is do we ever see anything new from them anymore i feel like a lot of the designs that are coming out from them have been done at other brands have been done at other luxury houses too and it's just their take on that i think there's always this question with luxury design labels about them copying sort of smaller emerging designers and obviously there's a level of influence that always goes on but I definitely think Louis Vuitton just do their take of something that's been done before we're never going to see anything revolutionary from Louis Vuitton in its current state I think as a brand for me I think it's lost a lot of its appeal but personally I think I was drawn towards the brand more so when Virgil was there just in terms of his prowess and how amazing he was as a designer and a creative. I think Louis Vuitton can sometimes come across as being luxury simply for the sake of being luxury. They just ultimately put their stamp on something, hike up the price and the uber rich will go out and buy it because it is Louis Vuitton. And I think by them raising the prices and making it so inaccessible for a lot of people, it really helps them get the money from the uber rich because they don't want the stuff that everybody else can access. In terms of like my favorite looks from the show, um, I'll pop one up now. I just think whilst it is an all black fit, I just think it really encapsulates what I was saying about Louis Vuitton putting their stamp on stuff that's been done before. You can see with the luggage as well as the pants and the jacket and the hat, it just really shows that cowboy aesthetic they've been going for with this runway. So if you were to show someone this, they'd know straight away that it is Louis Vuitton and it is a Louis Vuitton cowboy feet. As an actual outfit I would wear, I think this is probably the most eye-catching one for me. Um, it just looks like it's a perfect fit on everything. The jacket is really interesting. A slight different take on panelling on a bomber jacket and I love the fit of those shorts. Um, I'm really liking the sort of aesthetic of... Uh, mid boot with a short going into summer and it's something i'd really want to experiment with and i think that bag looks great too incorporating that western style throughout and then i think just in terms of the most outlandish look from it is this one here you've got the ropes as in like the lassos from cowboys you've got the hat and you've got just that mad mad jacket just that mad leather jacket and leather pant combo it's pretty crazy but you know you're gonna see someone in i don't know the NBA doing the full outfit walking out before the game. Moving on, I thought we'd talk about Acne. This is a brand which I'd probably put up there with my top five going into this fashion week. Just in terms of the things they've been putting out, they've really been progressive in terms of the products they've been offering and different hit items they've been having. I think it's clear, especially when you look at the success of like the Acne scarf currently. I think I've seen a statistic saying there's something like 3.2 billion likes on Acne 
acne scarf hashtag on TikTok, which is kind of mad. But yeah, overall, I would have said I was really excited to see what they were putting out. And then when the showcase did release, I was very underwhelmed. I don't really understand why they seem to have done this pivot. It's clear with the way they shot it, it's going for that opium look. Rick Owens inspired, you know, Carty's whole thing he's got going on. And whilst afterwards I've had a look at the products and seen some of it in buying meetings and sell-ins and, and heard people's reactions to the actual product in hand, it does appear that it's a lot better than it appears on the showcase. In general, I'm just really interested into why they've done this and where they're going with this. It doesn't really sit with anything they've done previously. And it'll definitely be one to watch to see what they do and what items sort of get picked up by other people and how they get styled. It can always be something that maybe is initially seen as a negative than pivoting from something, but maybe they're just looking to do something similar to Louis Vuitton and have a bit more of a theme with this showcase, which doesn't directly mean they're going for that opium style, but maybe they're just trying something new and let's hope it's that. In terms of some looks that I thought were really strong, um, one thing I really like they've got going on at the minute is their printed denim. I think printed denim and just experimenting with putting different things on it, which, you know, the likes of Our Legacy and I think even Y Project have done for quite a while. It's always something that's just going to lead to more experimentation. I really like with this fit how it appears that they've got all these sort of belt and keychain looks. Um, printed onto them as well as just that overall muddier you know grittier print going on the denim which just communicates a bit of a different grungier look whilst not having to do much accessorizing yourself and then you can add your own twist to it additionally again in this outfit i love the layering going on I really want to experiment myself and see more experimentation in the market with layering with, you know, bomber jackets, shirts and hoodies, you know, leaving them open so you've got those different textures and different openings there. It just brings a bit more to the table and really makes a bit more of a exciting outfit to look at. And then another look, which I don't think I'd ever be able to pull off myself, but I think this is really interesting. It looks to be another printed denim trying out that really super skinny you know crop top combo which isn't something that i would personally wear but i think it's definitely something that is eye-catching and tells a bit of a story then moving on i thought we'd talk about head Mainer. this is a brand which i'm trying to keep my eyes on a bit i haven't really bought anything from them but i've always been looking at the products they have out and it's been one that's always interested me so i definitely want to see what they would do in this Paris Fashion Week and it's another one where they have more of a showcase during the period rather than a runway. To me, and I also touched on this when I made my TikTok about it, and I'll say it again, this capsule really sort of envisions the hybrid working model which is this sort of thing going on in the UK and imagine elsewhere where you work from home a couple of days and you're in the office a couple of days a week. It's about like having a bit more of a working aesthetic in a more relaxed and open way. I love the bold shoulders going on. I love how bold the footwear is. And I also just think it's a new take on stuff that has been seen before and it just breathes a bit of new life into that sort of aesthetic and look. In terms of my favourite looks, I love the overcoat in this fit. Just looks like a great silhouette with that sort of curved shoulder area. It appears to be a bit seamless or even uh, maybe a raglan sleeve going on, but I really like it. It just sits perfectly. I really like the look of a blazer without a lapel, incorporating that with the bold shoulders they've got going on throughout the collection. It's just really putting a new twist on it. I love the fit of the pants with the slight pleat down them and the way they sit on the shoes is just perfect too. And that sort of grungier worn aesthetic with the footwear just really creates like a juxtaposition with the suit. So next up before we talk about Yoji, I'm always open to fashion and runways as a whole being way more playful and fun and having a celebrity feature is always going to make it a bit more interesting. So of course we had Norman Reedus walking for them. Um, I'm a big fan of The Walking Dead, so this was great to see, and it was really good to see his Q&As and his sort of feedback to walk in the show, and it just makes you realise that whilst a lot of these celebrities aren't fashionistas in the way they present themselves, there's always that interest and intrigue there. I think from Yoji, we're always going to get the same thing, the same aesthetic, 
but that never takes away from the work he's doing there. I also love in this runway the pairing of the looks. It's just another way to make, you know, those outfits stand out a bit more and almost have a his and hers side to it. In terms of the fits, I thought that was the strongest. I love Norman Reedus as one, of course. Um, it really just shows that yo Yoji aesthetic with the layering as well as that added detailing with the loose threading and the words on the jacket and the pants. Next, like I was saying with those his and hers look, I think this really shows the timeless nature of Yoji's work, how people of all ages can, can wear the collection and that's very apparent in this pairing. And then finally, I love the shirt in this. I'd really like to see this in person and potentially see if I can add it to the collection. Um, amazing detail as well on the trousers next up is a soft spot for me just in terms of how much i love him as a designer and the clothes he puts out kiko kristadinov i think it was another really strong collection from kiko i think he keeps on you know going from strength to strength he's really solidifying himself in terms of the the need to know emerging designers i thought the layering and paneling is evident through the whole collection Experiment a bit further with belting and embellishments, which is nice to see. And um, there was also what appeared to be some really strong bag offerings in the collection, which when Kiko's done a bag in a pass, it's always strong and always one you want to get. So that's nice. I'm also a big fan of these sleeker toe boxes that are coming through with footwear. I think it just really adds a bit more and experiments with it a bit more, considering we're used to so many chunky shoes nowadays. I think they always look so nice with different trousers, you know, whether that be pleated trousers or other ones. It's just something a bit different. In terms of some of the piping used on the clothing, I wasn't a big fan of that. For me, I think piping can be really tough because it can almost look a bit too sporty at times, which can lessen that luxury appeal of an item. And then of course the flares, paddling and darting he's playing with is something that he's always really good at. So I'm excited to see these products in hand. I guess for me, it was less playful than Spring Summer 24, but I think that's always gonna be it when you look at a fall winter collection versus a spring summer. There's always a bit more color in spring summer for me. But yeah, I'm really excited to see these products in hand and get to try them on when they hit the shelves. In terms of my favorite looks, I thought this jacket and the way they'd styled it was great. Um, I'm not sure why the guy's so moody, but here we are. But yeah, that hood creeping through at the top, as well as the slight darting you can see on the leg of the pant, just makes the whole fit sit really nice and create a nice silhouette. Then I love the red maroon color in this look. I think that's been a key takeaway, is there's been a lot more darker red tones coming through from Men's Fashion Week. But yeah, again, you can see the sort of flaring and the darting on the knees and the leg, just making those pants sit a bit nicer. And there you can see that sleek toe box coming through too. And finally, whilst it's a fall collection, I really like this look as like a summer go-to or even spring go-to outfit. Um, I really want to start playing around with layering with vests and vests as a whole being a bit more interesting rather than just your standard cotton ones. And I think the pants and that stitch detailing on the thigh is really cool too. Next up, I feel like we need to talk about Loewe. Who knew that JW could have a bit of a miss? I think as a whole, the collection was a bit weaker than I'd hoped. But naturally, I don't think everything's going to be perfect from him every time. I think the main thing that was missing for me is that fun edge that we're used to with JW. It wasn't quite as playful and as groundbreaking as we've had before, and that's where it lacked massively. I still think there's some very solid pieces in the collection, but that funness and, you know, edge was just not there. In terms of my favourite bits from the show, I always think the knitwear is really good from Loewe and JW as, as a whole, so I really liked this sort of fit going on here it's a bit of a different silhouette and i love the almost colorless nature of the knit just something different that i've not seen that much also that incorporated belt in the trousers is something interesting i love the look of this furry slash suede shirt as well paired with the denim just again adds a bit more of a playful edge to an otherwise minimal and standard look and then this knit overshirt was really nice. I'd really like to see this in person as well, just to see how it fits. But yeah, this is that sort of edge and funness I was wanting to see more of. Then finally, I thought we'd end with 
what I think was the best show of Paris Fashion Week with Balmain. I think it was eye-catching, extravagant, everything that Balmain's been missing for years. So I really think that Olivier is doing great work there. And I love the running theme of the facial features and, you know, bringing the attention to the lips because as an individual, he is known for his big lips. I just thought it was so flamboyant, so extra. And for me, that's what Balmain's always been about. It had the gold, the glitz, the glamour, as well as the colours and those bold looks and designs running throughout the whole collection. I definitely need to get the Balmain printed denim jeans as well. Another printed denim option we've seen on the runway, but I just think it's so funny, you know, as it's sort of a, an ode to the past Balmain. Some of my favorite looks from the show, as I've mentioned, the printed denim one is amazing. It mixes that flamboyant gold Balmain that we've known for years, as well as that historic denim that was so big for them previously. So yeah, it just encapsulates the brand perfectly. Then, as we've mentioned, the facial features. I think this is an amazing fit. You'd love to rock up to a black tie event or some serious event in this. It's not an everyday look, but you know people's heads would be turning with this one if you rocked up in it. And again, this look is just sublime. I love the glamorous nature of the glitter detailing on the top and how sleek and minimal the rest of the fit is. It's so seamless, but so, so perfect. I think with this Paris Fashion Week as a whole, a lot of the brands took a very safe route with it all which is a shame, but I think with the economic climate at the moment and the popularity of quiet luxury and minimalism, that it's just easier to do that than put your neck on the line, so to speak. I really liked how emerging designers seem to be getting the love and the attention they deserve, so I'm hoping that moves forward as we approach Women's Fashion Week and sort of main fashion weeks. But I'd love to know what you guys thought in general too. What was your favorite show? What did you think could have been better? And what are you excited to see going forward with men's fashion and fashion as a whole? So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.